so much luck. So we came down from the termite mound to get away from the alleys, and as you can see here, there is a little track that is developing. Now this track is from a slithery, writhing creature that is sitting just off to my right hand side. So there we go. You can see that we've got a giant legless skink that is here and is busy moving around. Now these guys are burrowers and are not venomous in any way. We don't have to worry about them so that's why we're sitting so close and not too stressed. And this little snake is basically warming up on the road. It's getting some sunshine that's coming out and then is going to move. Now the reason we spotted it is because it's sitting right in the middle of the road and it's just sort of taking it very easy. I can promise you it is alive. As you can see by the tracks, these tracks are on top of Byron's vehicle. This is where Byron drove just now with the elephant. So these are on top of his vehicle. So they definitely, definitely is alive. It's crossed while he was sort of at the hyena den and so he's still just taking it easy and it's probably trying to stay still as a defense mechanism so Brian you say don't we worry about stepping on a snake while we're on bushwalk well there's only one snake really out here that you have to worry about stepping on or two actually and those are both adder species so one is the puff adder and the other one is the night adder because those two there we go hello did you just see us and as they're not very good with their vision they need their tongue to taste what's going on so i think it's just realized that there's a camera watching it hello you're a celebrity now you're on tv well done um and so yes the puff adder and the the night adders you've got to be very careful they're actually responsible for a number of bites in africa because they don't move when you walk most snakes when you're walking will move away particularly the venomous venomous ones so things like cobras mumbers um boom slungs which is an afrikaans word for a tree snake um, they all venomous and generally when they sort of pick up your vibrations they try and get out of that area because they can feel that we're a big animal approaching and they don't want to get hurt and so they try and move out of the way um, the problem with puff adders is that they're an ambush predator and, and same with the night adder and so they sit and actually wait when they pick up vibrations because they want to be able to get whatever is coming that way and so often you then end up standing on them and then out of a defense mechanism they strike so yes we are concerned about snakes but the nice thing about a puff adder is as the name suggests is that it puffs so it makes this sound as you kind of get close to it and then you know that okay there's something here and you just stop moving and you look around you and you can generally spot them so you've got to be a little bit careful when you're walking and check where you're walking i think that's one of the first rules of the bush is always be aware of your surroundings and watch where you walk so you not only do you have to look out for big things like the elephants that we saw just now you've got to look out for these little guys So Daniel, all the way from Scotland, hello Daniel, I hope you're having a wonderful morning in Scotland and that it's not grey and rainy and you say this is your first snake that you've seen on Bushwalk. Well, I'm glad that we can show you one, they really are incredible creatures. Now this little blind snake is a termite and anteater, so that's what it will eat and so it's not really anything that we need to worry about. But you can see how it moves, it doesn't have a very fast motion and unfortunately for this snake is it actually can't spend too much time out like this because there's many a bird that will want to go after them and because they're slow sluggish moving creatures they're going to get themselves into trouble. So what it's going to try and do is going to get into the grass and you can see this coloration is perfect for camouflage so once it's into the grass it becomes quite difficult to spot and it's actually got the most beautiful pattern it almost looks like a rope and it's got these kind of little markings all over it and once it's then into the grass it can sort of move a little bit slower and then they'll find an area where the ground's quite soft and they'll burrow in there or they'll make use of a termite mound but it's a really special thing to see it might actually mean an indication that rain might be coming that they're moving So, Megan, I'm sorry, I missed the first part of your question. I know that you said Jono and evolutionary species, but if you can repeat that for me. So, Jono, this is an interesting question because, as we were saying, it's a, it's a legless skink, so it's kind of between a snake and a skink skink and you want to know are they a link between sort of evolutionary species well i suppose they are um they do come from kind of lizards so you do get some skinks that will actually have two little legs protruding off the side of the body um so they have 
those kind of lizard-like legs and then you get these guys that have no legs and are more snake-like so I suppose they are a link to between the snakes and the skinks um, I'll have to do a bit more research to check and actually see what their lineage is and what they sort of define them as whether they define more as a snake or a skink and whether or not there is a link between the two of them you might find that there is slight differences that means that they're in a different family altogether but it is possible indeed now we're going to move off the road because